Obard School of Welding Technology presents Training in Gas Tungsten Arc Welding. Topic number 15, Lecture Discussion. The Welding Characteristics of Stainless Steel. Objective, to become familiar with the various types of stainless steel with regard to classification, weldability, and common welding difficulties. Stainless steels are a group of iron-based alloys which have excellent resistance to corrosion. Stainless steels contain chromium or chromium and nickel as major alloying elements. To be called stainless, these steels must contain at least 11% chromium. Some types contain up to 27% chromium and varying amounts of nickel from none to 26%. They are called stainless because they resist rust. Generally, they retain their original finish under corrosive conditions as compared to ordinary steel and iron, which rust or corrode. When exposed to oxygen in the air, the chromium tends to form an oxide on the surface of the steel. This oxide coating protects the steel from further oxidation. There are many types of stainless steel which are alloyed to suit the application. The American Iron and Steel Institute classifies stainless steels by using a three-digit number such as 201, 304, or 410. Two series of type numbers cover most of the alloys. The 300 series and the 400 series. The 300 series are very popular for use in food processing, chemical processing, buildings, aircraft, and automobiles. They are non-magnetic in the annealed condition, but can become slightly magnetic if cold worked, that is, rolled or hammered while cold. The 300 series can be fabricated into products by all usual methods, drilling, machining, spinning, forming, drawing, and so on. They are relatively easy to weld, solder, or silver alloy braze. The 300 series stainless steels are alloyed with chrome and nickel. For this reason, they are sometimes called the chrome-nickel stainless steels. Although this group is relatively easy to weld, special precautions must be taken to prevent overheating the workpiece. This causes the weld and adjacent base metal to lose corrosion resistance. On multipass welds, usually a maximum interpass temperature is specified to prevent overheating. Now this means that the weld is allowed to cool below a certain temperature before any additional passes are deposited. The filler metals used to weld stainless steels are classified by the American Welding Society in a similar manner to the classification system for base metals. For example, the classification ER308 indicates an electrode or a rod with a composition similar to a 308 base metal. The filler metal is normally selected to match the chemical composition of the base metal. The 300 series base metals are welded with the 300 series filler metals. Two groups of filler metals are specifically designed to reduce the effects of carbide precipitation. Carbide precipitation occurs when carbon combines with chromium, leaving areas in the metal which lack corrosion resistance. The first group of these filler metals are those which have an L suffix after the composition number, such as ER316L. The L indicates a low carbon composition, which is about 300 percent maximum. This low amount of carbon reduces the chance of carbide precipitation. The second group of filler metals contain stabilizing elements, which tend to tie up the carbon in the metal. 
These elements are columbium, titanium, and tantalum. A limited number of 200 series stainless steels exist. This series substitutes manganese for some of the nickel found in a 300 series. This is done to make the steel less expensive. The 300 series filler metals are used to weld these stainless steels. The 400 series are commonly called the straight chromes, since chromium is the major alloying element. The 400 series contain some hardenable and non-hardenable alloys. Both types are magnetic. These alloys are usually more difficult to weld. When the 400 series filler metals are used, the weldment requires preheating in order to prevent a brittle weld, and post-heating to improve toughness. If pre- or post-heating of the weld is not possible, a 300 series filler metal can be used, which improves the ductility, but reduces strength. The defects discussed in topic six for carbon steels can also occur on stainless steels. In addition, stainless steel has some characteristics that make it more difficult to weld than low carbon steel. Stainless steel has a relatively high expansion and a low rate of thermal conductivity as compared to steel. This can cause distortion, especially in thin material. In order to produce good welds, joints must be carefully prepared, preferably by machining for accurate fit-up. Fixtures and clamps should be used to minimize distortion or the parts can be pre-bent or so aligned that the distortion forces will pull the parts into alignment. On thicker material, deposit the weld on both sides of the joint, alternating from side to side. The low conductivity of stainless steel can cause overheating in some areas and, as mentioned earlier, can cause the loss of corrosion resistance. Amperage settings are normally reduced for stainless steel compared to equivalent thicknesses of carbon steel. Also, a maximum interpass temperature is maintained. Backup bars of copper or steel with a copper facing are useful in absorbing some of the heat of welding. Water-cooled backup bars are also used to hold down the heat. Careful cleaning is much more important when working with stainless steels. Contamination can cause poor wells and loss of corrosion resistance. Contamination comes from many sources. Dirty gloves, cleaning solvents left on the metal, from cutting tools and brushes which have particles of iron, zinc, or other metals on them, and others. Another factor to consider when welding stainless steel is adequate gas shielding. Stainless steel open root welds are especially susceptible to oxidation on the root side of the joint. This is sometimes called sugaring. To prevent root oxidation, use a grooved backup bar to provide a passage for inert gas. On pipe and tubing, caps are often used to hold the gas on the inside to protect the root area. In summary, although stainless steel is considered quite weldable, extra care is required to produce a good weld. It is important to know all of the characteristics of the metal so that it can be properly welded. With improper welding techniques, the material may lose its corrosion resistance, crack, or have a poor appearance. Consult the manufacturer's data before attempting to weld stainless steel.